What is up? I'm Marcel, and welcome to The Modern Filmmaker. Today we are mastering the curves in Adventure Resolve 15. So there's an extremely wide range of possibilities with pretty much every tab in the color section of DaVinci Resolve. But the curve section alone can do what a lot of the other tabs do with even greater detail than they can do them. So today I'm going to use only the curves to show you a bunch of techniques that I use on a regular basis. So I've got a clip here in DaVinci Resolve 15 of Whitney Weiser, a fitness model on the step machine. And the first thing I'm going to go into is just white balancing with the curves. Um, the white balancing with the curves is probably the one of the most powerful and in-depth, like deep dive detail way to white balance, uh, just because you have so much control. And in the curves, you have this line that goes, you know, from top right to bottom left, and you have the Y R G B. And the Y is just your luminance, so from black to white, and then your R would be the luminance of the red. So your darkest red to your lightest reds, and then the greens and the blues the same. And so for the white balance, uh, you should have, by default, have this qualifier um, selected as your mouse tool. If not, all you have to do is go to this bottom left-hand corner menu in the previewer and go to qualifier. And just click on something white or, you know, as white as you can. Uh, this team on on her shirt was white. So I'll click that. And then you see it gave us uh, several dots here in the curves. And if I hit this unlock button here, we have these separate R, G, and B dots. And I just want these to line up because theoretically if these line up, then it'll be, that would be white on that spectrum. So if I, I'm going to try to bring the red and the green up to where the blue are since we have so much uh, space to work with in the luminance. So I'm going to start with, let's say, the green. And I don't want to move this horizontally. I just want to move it vertically up to where the blue is. So click on that and move this up to where the blue is, about right there. And then go to the red, boost this up to where the green. Maybe a little lower. That's good. And what you can do with the curves, now that we have these RGB lined up here, you can see that our uh, in the in the high range of our parade scopes, they're pretty lined up. But it's when you get to the midtones that they kind of get all over the place, um, which could just be how the shots lined up. But the thing is, in the curves, you at least have the ability to go in here. And make some changes to that. So if I go into the blue spectrum here in the curves, I can make a dot here towards the midtones, and then make another dot here towards the shadows. And then you can see here in the parade, I can lift these blues without lifting the highlights. I can even bring these highlights down a little bit to more so match the green and the red. And then boost the midtones a little more. Maybe go further into the shadows. And yeah, that looks better. Because if I go back to the original just lineup of that RGB, she kind of had an orange tint to her. And that's what was going on. That's what we were seeing here in the parade. So by being able to go in there and put, you know, a dot there, I could have put a dot anywhere. Um, in the spectrum I wanted to change and by being able to bring that up it really allowed us to get a much closer because her skin you know she was nice and tan for the shoot but she definitely wasn't orange so that's awesome so moving on I'm gonna hit alt s and make a new node and in this one I'm just gonna show you guys how to expose or how I usually go over the exposure or re-exposing my shot um, through color correction with the curves so here in the curves you know again I had this qualifier picked and what I usually do is try to divide where things are in the shot that I want to separate. So the focus in the shot is the girl, of course. So one thing I'm going to do is separate 
her luminance spectrum in the curves first. By doing that, I'm just going to click in her highlights. Now her nose is pretty in those highlights there. And then I'm gonna go down to a midtone on her skin. Let's go here, and then I'm gonna go to a shadow on her skin. Boom. This way, we have three dots made, even more if we go into the RGB, um, which we don't need to do with just exposure. But you know, now I have three dots made that really solidify just where her skin is. So if I change those dots, then it'll either brighten or darken different parts of just her. And then I can go back here, and I'll click maybe right here. And then I'll get another dot here towards the bottom in the deep of the shadows, and that will pretty much just be controlling the background and now you can see that like he controls some of the shadows on her face but for the most part it's just you know it's kind of just uh, changing the spectrum around her um, so I'll bring this back down and then I can click on something that's super bright like this and it'll create a spectrum there that way you know if I don't want this to get any brighter than it is right here then I just don't have to move that dot and it never will um, even if I move all these other ones so pretty much what I like to do is start from the bottom and work my way up, kind of nudging um, what I want to stand out. And of course, this being about her, I want her to stand out. So I'm going to go to the lowest spectrum that was on her, which was this third one from the bottom. And I'm going to move this slightly up a little bit, a little more. And then I'm going to go to the next one up, and I'll move this one up as well. And it looks crazy right now. And then I'll go to this highest spectrum on her face and I'll move this one up. And now it starts to level out. And what's so awesome about that is we completely just re-exposed her without, you know, re-exposing, you know, without brightening the, the team on on her shirt or without re-exposing the background. We really just kind of focused in on her. And I may create a dot here even. And let's see. Raise this up and then raise this a little more just to give her a little more punch. And then I'll even bring this up also. And of course, all this is just personal preference. You know, it all really comes down to you know, what your shot looks like and what you want it to look like in its final version. I'm gonna create a new node by hitting Alt S and this one will just be relighting. So what I'm gonna do with this one is go to the masking. And I'm gonna go a little further down into this clip. Let me go to here. And now that we can see her a little more, I kinda wanna bring this down. Yeah, I like that. And I'm going to bring these shadows down too. Just really make her pop. And then boom, from here, what I could do, I don't know if it's super necessary in this shot, but I'll create a mask and then quickly mask out her face. Voila. I'm going to soften this a little bit. You guys are like, this has nothing to do with the curves. Marcel, what are you doing? Just stick with me, people. Gosh, patience, people, patience. All right, so now that I have the mask made, I'm going to go back over here into the curves. And, of course, I could simply use, use this just to relight just her face. Um, now, sometimes... If you light your shots right, like this one is lit pretty well, so it's not really something I have to worry about. But a lot of the time, maybe, you know, you have the character lit, but you need that extra pop on their face. Um, and this would be a great technique. The curves is a great thing to use to do that because you can get those spectrums of, you know, the highlights here. I can click on a highlight, and like I did before, click on a midtone, and then a shadow up here. And I've got all these spectrums that I can use for just her face. If for some reason I want to, let's say, make it pop a little more, I could raise these spectrums and then pull down the shadows 
and that really gives her face a little more punch. Wow. Yeah, not bad. Maybe I'll bring down these highlights a little bit. Yeah. Maybe even bring this up and then make another point. Bring this down. Yeah. That looks much more natural. And that, I mean, I couldn't have just done that in the primaries bars. I couldn't have done it in the primaries wheels or the log wheels. Like, that's something that, just that amount of detail over the luminance of just her face, you know, it really took the curves to accomplish something like that. And that's just why I love it. It's awesome. Can't speak highly enough about it. And so, in the next node, what I'm going to do is create a little bit of style. Now, usually when you, you know, try to stylize a shot, teal and orange or whatever grade you want to do, you know, you're going to log wheels and, you know, possibly push the shadows in to the blues, the mid-tones, and to the oranges. But you can essentially do the same thing, but with even more detail in the curves. So how I'm going to do that is by first just separating the mid-tones, the highlights, and the shadows. So we know that the super white highlights are up here in this shirt. And then we probably have the second highest highlights uh, right here. And then we have some mid-tones right here. And then we've got some, and then we have some shadows right in here somewhere. So boom. So we have everything selected. And if you click off this, this lock button here, now here's where it does seem complicated and a little overwhelming. And of course, it, it is. It is a little complicated. It is a little overwhelming. But um, once you get, you know, once you get used to it, it just allows you to have so much power uh, to manipulate the image however you want that it's really helpful just to try to practice. Um, so this is not my favorite way to create style, but it is a way I like to practice because when I want to create something weird, something crazy, something that's hard to do, this is usually how I have to go to do it. Um, so first I'm going to go in to the blues. And what would you normally do here if you were in the log wheel? It's just that same kind of tactic. I would go to the shadows and the blues and let me boost these up. Boom. And then I could go to, let's say, the red, and I'll boost up the midsection in the red. Now this is going to give us maybe a little more of a purplish look because we're just messing with the red. But that's when we can go over to the green and take the dot that it gave us there in the midtones, and also, oop, that's actually the highlights. Take this green and boost these up slightly, just enough to give us back that natural skin tone in the skin. So it looks pretty good, but it still looks a little off. Um, so I'm going to go over to the red, and I'm going to bring this down. Actually, I'm going to bring the down in the shadows. Yes. That's looking a lot better. So this is a little drastic at this point, but I just wanted to show you guys kind of how easy it is to get that stylized look still just in the curves itself. So I'm gonna bring these back down a little bit in the shadows. Let's see, bring these reds down a little bit in the mid highs, bring them up in the lows. And actually bring the green up in the lows too. Yes. Now we're getting a much more stylized look. If I deactivate this node, you're really seeing the color contrast that we just added. It's just really a subtle little color contrast. I love it. And then, of course, one more node, and I'll create a vignette. It's a simple vignette with this node. Create a power window. Expand this out quite a bit. Soften it. 
and highlight this, invert it, and then boom. So again, now with the vignette, what do I want to do? I'm going to lock these in again. I'm going to click a, you know, something that's a highlight that would be actually in the vignette, which would be this outer part here. So this right here, and let's say get that right there, and then I can just slowly bring these down. which really brings out the focus on her. Create a new one here, bring these down a little more. And now the focus is completely on the girl on the machine. I love it. So just a quick recap here. We white balanced with the curves, then we adjusted the exposure with the curves. We uh, masked her face to make her pop more with the curves <laughs> we added style with the curves and then we added a vignette with the curves um, that's pretty awesome um, all with just the curves alone and do you want to use the curves for everything no you don't you definitely don't but just by knowing these little tools and techniques uh, if you're doing something else um, let's, let's say you're working the log wheels but yet the picture still just isn't quite being stylized the way you want that's when you can jump into the curves make different points and different color and luminance spectrums and really make those fine details uh, to make your your image pop out to make it really stand out and if you guys like this video make sure to click the like button just click it just click the like button and if you like videos like this make sure to subscribe if you have any questions, cares, concerns, make sure to leave them in the comment section down below. And as always, I'm your boy Marcel, and this has been The Modern Filmmaker. I'll see you on the next one. Peace!